Right, let's get into it then, shall we? This week has been a whirlwind of the good, the bad, and the just plain bizarre. From heartwarming sports stories that'll make you believe in the human spirit again, to legal battles that'll leave you questioning everything. We've got it all. We'll be diving into executions, toxic workplaces, teenage soccer prodigies, and thunderstorms so severe they could probably power a small city. So buckle up, Buttercup, because this is going to be a bumpy ride. So, Marcellus Williams, executed. A man whose life was taken by the state. Let's just sit with that for a second. Executed. A life ended, a family shattered, a community left in mourning. Now, capital punishment is a whole other can of morally ambiguous worms we could unpack for hours. But this case, this case is particularly troubling. It raises so many questions about the integrity of our justice system. The legal system in theory is supposed to be about justice, about due process. It's supposed to be a beacon of fairness and equality. But when you have cases like this, where there are serious questions about guilt, about evidence, it makes you wonder if the system is just a glorified coin toss. Is it really about finding the truth or is it about winning and losing? Heads you live, tails you're strapped to a gurney. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? The randomness of it all? And that's not justice, that's barbarism dressed up in a suit. It's a facade of civility masking a brutal reality. We'll delve into the details of the case, the arguments, the implications. We'll look at the evidence, or lack thereof, and the legal battles that ensued. Because this isn't just about Marcellus Williams, it's about the system that failed him. It's about the cracks in the foundation of our justice system. And it's a system that, frankly, needs a serious overhaul. We need to address these issues head on. We're talking a full-blown, top-to-bottom Marie Kondo level cleanse. We need to get rid of the practices and policies that don't serve justice. Except instead of sparking joy, we're aiming for, you know, basic human decency. Because at the end of the day, that's what justice should be about. Treating people with dignity and respect. Okay, let's cleanse the palate with a bit of heartwarming goodness. Sometimes, in the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, we forget to stop and appreciate the simple, beautiful moments that make life so special. A 105-year-old Vancouver Canucks fan met Quinn Hughes, the team captain. Imagine living through more than a century of history and still having the energy and enthusiasm to cheer for your favorite team. And if that sentence doesn't make you feel even a tiny bit warm and fuzzy inside, then I don't know what to tell you. This fan's excitement was palpable, her joy infectious, spreading smiles to everyone around. You might be a robot. Seriously, how can you not be moved by such a genuine display of passion and love for the game? This story is a testament to the power of sports, the power of community, and the power of just being a fan. It shows how sports can bring people together, transcending age, background, and even time. It's a reminder that even in a world that often feels overwhelmingly bleak, there are still moments of pure, unadulterated joy to be found. Moments that make us believe in the goodness of life and the strength of human connections. We'll hear from the fan, from Hughes, and we'll bask in the glow of this beautiful human connection. Their conversation was filled with laughter, shared memories, and mutual admiration. Because sometimes that's all we need. A reminder that no matter how old we get, our passions can keep us young at heart. A little bit of hope, a little bit of hockey, and a whole lot of heart. These are the moments that make life worth living. The stories that remind us of the beauty in our shared humanity. Richard Goodall, remember that name because he just won America's Got Talent. And deservedly so, this guy is ridiculously talented. We'll relive some of his standout performances, discuss his journey, and speculate wildly about his future. Because let's be honest, this is just the beginning for Richard. He's got that special something, that star quality that you can't teach. He's going places, big places, and we'll be here to witness it all, from AGT stage to global domination. Mark my words. Chapter 4 Jack Porter, Arsenal's teenage prodigy, 16 years old. 16? It's hard to believe, isn't it? At an age when most kids are just starting to figure out who they are, Jack Porter is already making waves in the world of professional soccer. Most 16-year-olds are worried about acne and algebra, trying to navigate the tricky waters of high school life. Jack Porter, on the other hand, is worried about scoring goals for Arsenal. He's not just playing for fun, he's playing to win, to make history, because he just became their youngest ever starter, against Bolton no less. 
Imagine the pressure, the expectations, and yet he handled it like a seasoned pro. This kid is a phenomenon. His talent is undeniable, his potential limitless. Coaches, fans, and even seasoned players are taking notice. We'll break down his debut, analyze his skills, and try not to feel too old and inadequate in the process. Because seriously, 16? It's almost surreal. What were we doing at 16? Probably not making headlines or breaking records, probably trying to figure out how to sneak out of the house to go to a party with lukewarm beer and questionable music. Those were the days, right? This kid's out here living the dream. He's not just playing a game, he's living his passion, his dream and inspiring countless others along the way. And we're here for it. Watching every moment, cheering him on and feeling a sense of pride and excitement for what the future holds for this incredible young talent. Chapter 5. Alberta's Bill of Rights. A change for better or worse. Alberta's Bill of Rights has undergone some significant changes, and as with any significant legal changes, there are questions, lots of questions. We'll unpack those changes, explore the potential impact, and try to make sense of it all. Because sometimes legal jargon feels like it was specifically designed to make our heads explode. We'll talk to experts, we'll analyze the implications, and we'll try to figure out what this all means for the people of Alberta. Because that's what matters, right? The people, not the politicians, not the lawyers, the people. Chapter 6 Aurelia, batten down the hatches. Severe thunderstorm watch for Aurelia and surrounding areas. That's right, folks. Mother Nature's decided to throw a tantrum. We'll discuss the forecast, the potential dangers, and the precautions residents should take. Because safety first, people. Always safety first. We'll talk about emergency preparedness, we'll talk about evacuation plans and we'll talk about the importance of having a good supply of snacks on hand. Because let's be honest, nothing makes a thunderstorm more bearable than a family-sized bag of chips and a good movie. Chapter 7, the WNBA playoffs are heating up and the semi-final matchup between the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces is shaping up to be an absolute barn burner. We'll preview the game, analyze the key players and make some completely uninformed predictions. Because that's what sports commentary is all about, right? Wild speculation and questionable analysis. We'll talk about the team's strengths, their weaknesses and their chances of making it to the finals. Because this is the WNBA, baby, where the competition is fierce, the talent is undeniable and the excitement is palpable. Chapter 8 Rowdy Tellez cut loose and left adrift. Rowdy Tellez, cut by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Just like that. Gone. Poof. Vanished into the ether of baseball free agency. We'll discuss the reasons behind the decision, the implications for the Pirates, and the potential landing spots for Tellez. Because in the world of professional sports, nothing is certain. Except for the fact that eventually, everyone gets cut. It's the circle of life, Simba. Hakuna Matata. We'll analyze the Pirates' decision, we'll speculate about Telez's future, and we'll try to make sense of it all. Because sometimes, the world of professional sports is just a big confusing mess. Chapter 9. Ellen DeGeneres. The toxic truth behind the smiles. Ellen DeGeneres, America's sweetheart, the queen of daytime television, and apparently, the victim of a toxic work environment. We'll discuss DeGeneres' revelations, the fallout from the allegations, and the importance of speaking out against workplace toxicity. Because nobody, no matter how famous or powerful, deserves to be subjected to a toxic work environment. It's unacceptable. Period. We'll delve into the details of the allegations, we'll discuss the importance of accountability, and we'll applaud DeGeneres for her bravery in speaking out. Because sometimes, the truth hurts, but it also heals. Chapter 10, Detroit Tigers. Playoff dreams on life support. The Detroit Tigers, five games left. Playoff hopes hanging by a thread. It's do or die time, baby. We'll analyze their remaining schedule, their chances of making the playoffs, and the potential scenarios that could lead to either triumph or disaster. Because in the world of baseball, anything can happen, especially in the final stretch of the season. We'll talk about the key players, the crucial matchups, and the nail-biting tension that comes with every pitch, every hit, every out. Because this is baseball, and baseball is life. Outro. That's all, folks, for now. So there you have it. 
Another week, another roller coaster of news. We've laughed, we've cried, we've questioned the very fabric of reality, and now it's time to say goodbye. But don't worry, we'll be back next week with more news, more analysis, and more questionable jokes. Until then, stay safe, stay informed, and try not to get struck by lightning. Seriously, those thunderstorms in Aurelia sound nasty.